early evening, June 2nd, 1983. Just before seven o'clock, the plane is a little more than halfway to Toronto. What was that? Three circuit breakers have popped out. Like fuses, they protect delicate electrical circuits in the plane from becoming overloaded. In the cabin, one of the passengers complains about a disturbing odor. Yeah, that is a strange smell. A wisp of smoke is leaking out of the washroom. It's two minutes past seven, just 11 minutes since the circuit breakers first popped out. Laura Kayama brings Captain Cameron the disturbing news. Excuse me, Captain. There's a fire in the washroom in the back. They just went back to go put it out. You want me to go back? Yeah, go. A fire on board an aircraft is one of the worst situations any crew can face. The plane is some six miles high. What starts as a spark can turn deadly in a few short minutes. But at the moment, Cameron doesn't know how bad the situation is. The crew is growing concerned. They've already moved passengers toward the front of the jet as far as possible from the creeping smoke. Captain Donald Cameron is waiting for an update from the back of the plane when suddenly he's got a new problem. The master warning light is on. Electrical systems throughout the plane, including some in the cockpit, begin to fail. Copilot Claude we met is at the back of the plane. The washroom door handle has become hot to the touch. He doesn't even risk opening it. <coughs> Faced with a potential fire on board, the crew has no choice but to land their plane as soon as possible. As soon as the decision is made, another warning light goes on. They've just lost most of their emergency power. Cameron finds that a critical piece of his plane isn't working properly. The horizontal stabilizer on the tail of his DC-9 is frozen, set for cruising at almost 33,000 feet. Cameron uses the part that's still working, the elevators, to make the plane dive. But like a car that's lost power steering, the aircraft resists. As Cameron pushes on the controls, they push back with a pressure equal to 44 pounds. Squinting through the smoke, the crew of Flight 797 lands hard. At 20 minutes after seven, the Air Canada plane is on the ground. It's less than 30 minutes since the first sign of any trouble on board Flight 797. The cabin is pitch black and burning hot. Passengers who have found the exit slide off the wing and stumble to safety. The passengers who escape the plane suffer from smoke inhalation and minor injuries, but most are not badly hurt. What began as a simple electrical problem has taken the lives of 23 people. What caused the deadly fire? What went so horribly wrong? <laughs> 